the Peugeot 308. Now, when it was released in 2014, it won this. Not a piece of paper, it won European Car of the Year. Oh, actually, I wonder if following Brexit, that's going to be there <laughs> anymore. What this means anyway, is that from Sweden to Spain, it was voted as the best car released that year. And you can kind of understand why, because it's a really good looking car. It looks more expensive than a Golf, but it's actually about a grand cheaper. It starts at £15,000, but you can save on that price. If you click up there to go to carwow.co.uk, see what deal you can get on a new Peugeot 308. And the good news is, not only is it awesome on the outside, climb inside, and thankfully, the theme continues. I really like this small sporty steering wheel and on the whole the quality of the materials is pretty impressive. So those in your direct eye line, they pass the car. Wow, flick test. So there we go, that's soft and yielding, soft and yielding, soft and yielding. But lower down, I mean this, ow, that is really hard, scratchy and brittle. Not very nice at all, but I can forgive it because, well, there's no buttons cluttering up the dash. This is a very minimalist design because most of the controls are done through this touch screen. More on that in a bit. Now, if you're thinking of buying this car, ignore the headline grabbing entry level model with its low price because it's got nothing on it. You need to step up to the active model because then you get all around parking sensors, you get dual zone climate control, and this seven inch touch screen with satellite navigation, which, well, isn't quite as nice to use as the systems you get on BW Group cars. Now, if you click up there, you can watch our full in depth video review of the infotainment system and have another look around this car's cabin and you'll see that well cubby spaces in there are all right the door bins are good though both front and back they can hold large bottles of water now the 308's trump card is its huge boot it's one of the biggest in this class so you can fit in all your luggage no problems at all and that's why i'm illustrating it with a moderate sized rucksack the only problem with this boot is that while you do have some look you've got some underfloor storage there if you don't have the space saver spare wheel you can't actually raise the floor up, so you end up with this big boot lip here. There's some other problems as well. Yes, you can get a ski hatch, which is a nice feature, but only on higher trim versions. And when you fold the seat backs down, you end up with this big step in the boot floor, which makes it really hard to push heavy items to the front of the car when you're trying to pack this thing full. Now, in the back seats, it gets a little bit worse still. So let me just move these out of the way. You see, there's a trade-off for that huge boot, and that's rear passenger space. So, yeah, it feels more like a super mini in the back in terms of knee room. I mean, look at that, it's very tight. Headroom, that's tight as well. People over six foot are really gonna struggle in the back. It's not great for carrying three either. Yes, you've got this hump in the floor, but that's not the problem. The problem is the small foot wells, this narrow seat, and the fact that this car's body is quite narrow. So, it's actually one of the worst cars in this class for rear passengers. On the plus side, the rear doors do open nice and wide so you can easily escape your torture. Now if you click up there you can watch our detailed practicality video on this car, see what it's like with three people in the back, how easy it is to fit a child seat and see just how much stuff we could cram into this car's boot. Now though it's time to hit the road to see what the Peugeot 308 is like to drive. Right then let's start with the bad stuff. So in manual versions of this car the gear shift and the pedals they just feel all blah, yeah. Not very nice at all. Then there's the wind noise. Can you hear it? At speed, you get quite a bit of wind whistle and it can get on your nerves after a while. You have to turn up the stereo when you're going on the motorway. Then there's the visibility. Fine going forward, but out the back, it's not very good. And you've got huge rear pillars as well. In fact, if you click up there, you can join me for a 360 degree passenger ride video and see for yourself. Okay, then now let's talk about things I do like about the 308. So the 1.6 litre diesel in this car, it's a 120 horsepower version and it's got plenty of power. And Peugeot says it should be able to do 80 miles per gallon, though the trick can be it says I'm only doing 47. Still, moving on, I like this small steering wheel. It feels quite sporty and that combined with the fact that the steering is actually light makes it dead easy to maneuver this car in town. The suspension as well, it's nice and comfortable over bumps, yet it doesn't feel all soggy and wallowy in the corners. That said, it's you know it's still not the sportiest handling car in this class. It's not gonna set your world on fire. But then you can't have everything, can you? You can't have comfort and handling. Oh, actually, yes, you can. You can in the new Vauxhall Astra. Maybe that's why the Vauxhall Astra was car of the year for 2016. On the whole, the Peugeot 308 is an excellent small family car, but it does have some annoying traits. Here's five. Depending on your ideal driving position, the dials can be obstructed by the steering wheel. There's no rear seat belt keeper, so when you put the seats back, it snags. 
want to adjust the climate control? Well, you can only do it through the touchscreen, which is a little bit awkward while you're driving. There's no clever storage compartment for the parcel shelf, so I guess you're just gonna have to kind of leave it, yeah, there. Peugeot couldn't be bothered to move the fuse box to the other side with the wheel for Ryan Drive car, so the glove box is half the size it should be. However, there are plenty of cool things about the 308, which more than make up for all this. The bulbs and the full LED headlamp should last the life of the car, so you'll never need to replace them. For improved efficiency, the 308 is up to 140 kilograms lighter than its predecessor. That's about the same weight as a giant bander. Unlike the rest of the body, which is made out of metal, the boot lid is made out of plastic, so it's lighter for you to lift. The rev counter rotates in the opposite direction of the speedo, just like in an Aston Martin. The HDI 120 has such low emissions that Peugeot says it has the lowest company car tax of any diesel car. So then, overall, what do I think of the Peugeot 308? Well, the infotainment system is a bit annoying and so is the driving position. It won't suit everyone, but this is a comfy car and it's got a massive boot. Now, if you click up there, you can get more information and find out the best deal you can get on a Peugeot 308 at carwow.co.uk. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, share it, and subscribe to our channel. And if you click over there, you can watch our detailed practicality, 360 degree passenger ride, and infotainment video review for the Peugeot 308. Now, did you spot the Easter egg in this video? It was the road, the A308, on the car sat nav screen.